Hi. Oh. I usually think that applause is premature, so we'll, we'll see how things go. First of all, I'm impressed this many people are interested in spreadsheets. That is absolutely awesome. This is something that, um, you know, as we go forward, you'll see through the talk. I, I think it's one of those areas that's just been sadly overlooked in both computer science and a lot of computer engineering. So I, you'll say, I'm, I'm Joe Hellerstein, not Alicia Clark. She looks much better than me. She will join us later on. The two of us have been collaborating on a project, on this uh, Size Sheets project. And I want to share with you today where we are. I'll tell you, we're, we're certainly at the point right now where we're looking for a lot of feedback and also collaboration. You'll get more of the feeling for as we go along. So uh, first of all, just you know, a quick run through so we're on the same page with spreadsheets. This is uh, pretty common stuff. You see um, typically column headers with rows of data. If you want to put in a formula, you, you usually this is an Excel kind of thing. You put it in and you do it in terms of the coordinate system. So um, A2 would be the column a with uh, the row two. And so picking up that number, I'm going to do a division on it. That's my formula there. And the cool thing about this is you get to see the result right away. Now, if I want to do some iteration, I want to do the same formula all the way down. Uh, you use copy and paste. You end up with the uh, numbers over here. Um, of course, if you look under the covers at what the actual uh, code looks like, it looks sort of like something where, you know, sort of like assembly language code. But generally, people don't look at that too much, uh, especially with these kinds of simple formulas. So why is this so compelling? Why is this something that is so widely used? I think there are a few things. Uh, one of them is that you're focused on calculation, not programming. By that, I mean you don't have to worry about data dependencies. The fact that um, this column here depends on that column there, they don't really care. It figures it out underneath. And whereas of course, in program, we've got, to we've got to order our calculations in the manners we care about data dependencies. You don't have to worry about flow control. I did iteration without a for loop. I did copy-paste. And the last part is no data structures, probably one of the more complicated parts of programming and dealing with data structures. That's sort of the background here. You know, programming has been around for a very long time. I guess dates back to Ada Lovelace 150 years ago. Real programming where you're you know, actually using machines, you could argue, comes from the Second World War, talking about 70 years ago. Spreadsheets are relatively new. Electronic spreadsheets, we're probably talking about the 70s. And so, but if you look at the difference, you know, depending on the stats you look at, around 20 million or so programmers today, professional programmers, about a billion spreadsheet users, people who use formulas. So clearly there's, you know, a lot going out there. Uh, probably, I think, you know, my, my claim is, although it's t mostly unsubstantiated, I guess, is that it's the most popular uh, environment for, uh, for calculations on the planet. Um, we when we were thinking about what we wanted to do, developing and set of features, we sort of classified our users into three categories. The first of what we're calling novice in terms of calculations. Those are people who basically want to evaluate a formula. They would use a calculator, but a spreadsheet's so much better. Um, and they're going to construct sort of linear recipes of the things they do. Then there are people we call scripters. Um, they certainly can, you know, they would work interactively in like in a MATLAB console or an R console. They know about for and if, but they may not save anything to a file. If they save it to a file, it's like one big thing. Um, if they want to get reuse, it's copy, paste, blocks of code. Um, and they generally, and then we'll worry about algorithms, but they don't use functions. So functions not part of their repertoire. And the last one are programmers. These are people who could use like a, you know, a, a, a macro language like Visual Basic or um, AppScript for, for uh, in, uh, in Google Sheets. So we're primarily focused on the top two. And, and sort of our idea is that uh, what we do should be as easy with traditional spreadsheets as it is with size sheets, but provide so much more, address a lot of issues. And secondly, we'd like to be able to make it so that people can move from being a novice to a scripter and a scripter to a programmer, so advance their skill set. Um, so, I'm going to talk about some of the issues with spreadsheets today, and there are a lot of things that are very public. I mean, one of the things you'll, you'll see common are the errors in spreadsheets. That hasn't been our main focus. Our main focus has been sort of like the engineering consideration. So this notion of what we call expressivity, you know, how much of an algorithm or a calculation can you write? And how can you, and can you read it? So for example, this is a calculation here, a simple sequence of steps that's commonly done if you are a, a biochemist and you look at an enzyme. You get information about what's called the substrate, that's S, reaction rates. And then you do a series of steps here with doing a regression. And then you're looking for a, a final computation over here of these two parameters here, the Vmax and the Km. So 
This is a common thing. You can do this in a spreadsheet in Excel, uh, for example. Um, and you would see the columns here underneath the covers, like the one over S here, the one over V over here. Um, but if you look under the covers at, at what's there, it's pretty hard to interpret, pretty hard to read. Um, and in particular, if someone is um, trying to describe a recipe, a sequence of steps, all you can do is sort of infer it maybe from the columns, and that may be dangerous because in spreadsheets, data dependencies uh, are not done implicitly by position. So that's, that's one issue. A second issue we're trying to address is reuse, and this is pretty fundamental in software. You know, if I spend time investing in a spreadsheet calculation, I would like to be able to reuse that calculation in others. I mean, for example, that, that last calculation I did, I did it for a single set of data. I want to do it for many sets of data over and over again. So how do I do that? Well, uh, typical way of doing that in a spreadsheet is I would add values into these columns, maybe insert rows or delete rows or change values. But that's really awkward uh, to do. Uh, a second thing that I would really like to do is I would like to use this calculation in another calculation. Like I have a set of files, each of which should be calculated in the same way. Can I use this spreadsheet here to do that calculation? The answer is pretty much no. I mean, that's a really, really hard thing to do. And the third one is, suppose the person who is the domain expert is a spreadsheet user, and you have a bunch of software engineers who are writing in Python. You know, can they use that spreadsheet calculation in their Python codes? And the answer is no. I mean, they can rewrite it, but they can't reuse it. So this reuse issue is another one that's been front and center for us um, to attack. So there are other issues as well. Uh, we do have a paper in the proceedings. You can check this out, what we're doing in this area of performance and complex data. Um, but right now, I'll, I'll get to sort of my, my main rant, which is you know, computer science has really done nothing for the vast majority of people who do calculations. Computer engineering has done a lot. I think um, you know, Microsoft is selling has advanced a lot, and certainly Google Sheets and off Open Office. But in terms of thinking about things like designs of you know, innovations in user interface or feature innovations or algorithmic innovations, it is to, to say that you're a spreadsheet user, it's like saying you're gay in the 1980s. People stay away from you. I mean, it's, it's really obscene. So at any rate, we're trying to you know, have all the spreadsheet users come out of the closet and uh, see what it is we can provide them for better tooling. So I'm going to talk about this, you know, what we're doing in this, this project, SciSheets. Uh, like, a, you know, you saw our tagline, power of programming with the simplicity of spreadsheet. And what we've done is focus on a few set of um, features. So here are the issues I listed before, the expressively reused performance and complex data. And what we're going to do is um, talk about several features we have. So uh, one of them is not you know, very appropriate for this con conference. Instead of having these, uh, the formulas be uh, sort of these sort of cryptic, uh, spreadsheet-ish kinds of calculations, you're going to use Python. And actually, it's going to be, we've made it so that any Python um, expression or statement is available to you, including imports, including eval. Um, the second thing is, and this is sort of an interesting idea, take your spreadsheet and export it as a function, as a Python function in, in a module. So now you get two benefits. First of all, you get the benefit that a programmer can use it because it's Python. And secondly, you get the benefit that in my calculations, I can reuse it because I'm writing Python as my formula language. Um, that, it's clearly a benefit in terms of performance as well because now I can execute standalone. And I'm, I'm not going to talk a lot about the, uh, at all really about the complex data, but data structures, providing richer data structures for spreadsheet users is also a, a challenge. Uh, our technical approach has been to allow subtables, so tables where the columns themselves could be tables. And this provides some richness in terms of, for example, expressing end to end relationship. The paper has more detail on that. OK, so let me go through briefly these couple of features. I'm going to focus on the, uh, the expressivity part with uh, Python formulas, and then uh, Python, uh, formula being the formula language, and then also um, the export capability. OK, so um, here's what site sort of a simulation. By the way, there's also a, um, there is a video uh, of, you know, a demo of this as well. So you can see this in, in a richer form. But uh, I'll give you sort of a simulated interaction. So it looks pretty much like a spreadsheet. Um, anywhere where there's an asterisk, by the way, means that there's a formula behind it. Uh, formulas are only allowed in columns in size sheets. And I admit that does restrict somewhat what you write because spreadsheets can sort of have arbitrary structures in terms of formulas. However, it has a huge advantage 
when someone looks at a spreadsheet, you know where the heck the code is. That's a huge problem. Where's the code? Anywhere. So, any case, so the size sheets, we tried to restrict that a bit. But I also will you know, ha, you know, go on and say we're not the only ones who do that. There are other implementations of that same concept. So what you do is, um, for example, this column right here, we're configuring the inverse of S. You would click on that. You get it yellow, means it's highlighted. You see a pop-up. You go over here and say, oh, gee, I want, the for I want to do a formula for this. And you get to see the formula. And the formula looks just like a Python expression, where the column names are actually Python variables available to you in the namespace in which you write your formulas. They actually, what they are is they're Python arrays. Uh, their, or their NumPy arrays is, is actually what they are. And this has all sorts of interesting benefits to us because now you can do essentially vector operations in a natural way. You have all of the NumPy capabilities available to you. And it looks very natural to someone who's a novice or, or even a scripter. Um, so this is obviously a little bit more readable than looking at you know, uh, the uh, sort of grid-like uh, column formulations. And also you have all of these Python packages available to you, which is very rich. Okay, um, you can also have a formula, uh, the, a formula for a cell like this INVV over here, the inverse of V, um, that is an entire script. So what's going on here, it's not just computing the inverse of the column over here, although it does that right over here. It does a few other things as well. It's actually able to assign values to other columns. So it computes the value for here, for example, for slope and intercept, and it uses the um, SciPy stats. Um, a package which it imports up here. So all that is available to you. Now, not only is this rich in terms of what you can express as an algorithm, it also puts in one place the code which is essentially the recipe, the computational recipe for what's going on. So there you have it, it's, it's a lot more readable too. So, you know, novices can write scripts and then uh, can, in simple recipes and the scripter could actually write an algorithm, be very expressive in terms of what it is that they would like to calculate. Uh, so let me move on to the next one here. This is actually uh, um, one that I know uh, is uh, I interest to many who I talk to. And that is to say, how can I take this spreadsheet and create a Python function out of it? So when you look at the spreadsheet, for example, this one here, it has inputs S and V. And the outputs of it are actually this Vmax and KM. And so, I mean, I could define other functions here or subfunctions, but basically what happens is when I click on this header over here on the, for the table, it brings up something here to export a function. And when I export the function, I get this pop-up here, which lets me specify the name of the function, uh, the inputs, and the outputs. And when I press submit, it creates that function. Now, I don't have time to go through all that. There's code generation behind the scenes. Not only does it generate the module that contains this function, Michaelis is what I named it there, it also generates a module that is a test for that function. Because we actually have all the information here needed to test because we know what the output is in one case. So um, that's very convenient for us. What I will do is give you a feeling for the kind of code that gets generated and some of the subtleties here. Because remember, this the way the spreadsheet is, is structured, we don't know what the de data dependencies are a priori. And we can't compute it really by looking at the parse tree because you can be using evals. And so we can't really determine data dependencies. So how do we go about that? Um, so here's sort of the, the general, the, the overall structure. Um, there's, you know, the def statement for the function. Uh, there's some prologue information about it for imports. This is sort of the guts of it. We we'll go through and take the formulas that were entered in each column, and you see them evaluated. Then there's some wrap up there, and then the results are returned at the bottom of the function. And let me just break out, there's a lot more detail in the paper. It goes through a specific example. But if I break out this evaluation part here, what's going on is for each column, it takes that code, which should be a val valid Python expression or script, and it tries to do, it, it does an eval on it. And if that is successful, then um, it just, it, it, uh, essentially what happens is uh, values are assigned, like you saw in the, uh, uh, in the slides. Um, if it's not successful, it could be not successful for many reasons. It could be not successful because they wrote code that's buggy or syntactically incorrect. Or it could be, it could not ev uh, evaluate, it could get a, generate an exception because um, a dependent variable is not assigned because we don't know the order in which the columns need to be evaluated. So either way, uh, the exception is recorded. If you go through this loop as many times as there are columns with formulas in it, 
you're guaranteed to at least be able to evaluate all the columns because execution continues down. So the worst case, you evaluate one at a time. It might be the last column that might be the last evaluate, but then that means the next time you could get whatever was dependent on that and so on. Um, so that's the way it works. You could potentially speed this up a little bit because it may be if you're in the right order, you get you know, the same values for the columns and in successive iterations. So that is another way of telling that you've, uh, you've you completed the iteration. Of course, you, you know, if, you generate, if, you can, if you've generated an exception, then that has to be returned. Okay, so um, let me switch over to Alicia and she'll tell you um, our directions. Okay, hello. So um, we're kind of kind of switched gears now, and I'm going to talk about some features that are currently under develop or we'd like to add to size sheets. So one of the first things is um, subtable name scoping. So if you guys think back to when you were first learning how to use Excel, if you changed a formula and you use that same formula for like multiple columns, you had to go and copy and paste each time. Sometimes you would forget and you'd have all these bugs. So with this, we would pretty much hopefully eliminate the copy and paste. So if you updated a formula in one column, um, if there were columns with the same name um, in different subtables, then the formula would update, which is pretty useful. Um, the next thing we would like to do is develop um, an intuitive way to do version control with spreadsheets. Um, I'll talk more about this in the next couple of slides. And then we'd also like to add um, visualization to size sheets. So right now you can have uh, columns with numbers, but you can't actually visualize the data. So there are a lot of uh, toolboxes available in Python that we would like to maybe be able to incorporate into size sheets. Um, so that's something that could be really useful too. So for this talk, I'm gonna talk about some of the ideas that we have um, for integrating uh, GitHub into size sheets. So you can imagine there's three basic things um, that you'd like to do with version control, um, branching, merging, and differencing. But since we're primarily focused on novice users or people that aren't that familiar um, with programming and writing scripts, we kind of would like to develop a system that's very intuitive. Um, so that people could do version control without necessarily um, knowing that they're doing version control. And there's a bunch of systems um, that kind of have this idea, but not necessarily with spreadsheets. So uh, the innovation here would be that it, we would provide uh, an intuitive approach to version control um, for spreadsheet users. Okay. So the first thing um, we kind of wanted to think about is would be how branching would work in a spreadsheet type environment. Um, and this can be really important because if you have the initial data and you had multiple users um, that kind of wanted to work with that data, you could then uh, create branches so that users could do things um, kind of in parallel. And you could also kind of explore in a branch, so you wouldn't necessarily um, mess up the columns and formulas that you already have in the initial spreadsheet. Um, so in this sim simple example, we have two users. Um, one creates average column one, and then the other one uh, just adds 10 to column one. Um, so you can see this is a pretty basic example, but it's kind of intuitive. You can tell that there's two different workflows going on. Okay. The next thing um, we want to look at is once you have these branches, how would you merge them back together? Which could be potentially problematic, especially if you have the same types of column names, but maybe what you call it is different. Say someone had mean, someone had average you could uh, kind of have merged conflicts. Um, so in this very simple case, you could, since there's no conflicts, uh, everything would just combine to make a nice table. Um, but like I said, if you do have merged conflicts, then uh, you need to do more complicated things. So one of the things we thought about trying to use was to actually have the user interact um, with the merging process, so the user, if there were two columns that potentially conflict it, then the user could go in and select which column they want it or which name they want it for a particular column. And then the final thing we wanted to look at is the, if you wanted to look at a history of git commits and actually check out one of this, 
commits, how this would kind of look in the spreadsheet environment. So for example, if we just start with a very um, basic size sheet, if you were to add a column to that, you can see it would just turn the size sheet green. Maybe potentially in the future, it could just change the column that was changed to green. Um, again, if you add another column, the same thing would happen. And then if you removed a column, it would turn to red. So these are the colors that uh, are used on GitHub right now. So uh, it's a good idea. OK. So um, with that, um, I'll just leave up the summary since that's about 25 minutes. Um, but I would like to say um, the project is available on GitHub. So feel free to check that out. And right now, um, as Joe kind of alluded to, we can do reliable demos, but we're not yet in beta level code. And finally, um, we're evaluating deployment options. So if anyone has any ideas, feel free to come talk to us. And we're also um, would love to have more people involved in the project. So if anyone's interested, uh, feel free to talk to us as well. Uh, with that, I guess we'll take questions. Thank you. I'm not sure I've altogether followed it. I think you're talking about like automatically creating summaries from data. No, just visual. Yeah. Yes. So that's essentially one of the future directions we want to have with this project. So we want it to look pretty much similar to Excel that once you have the data or a summary of it, you can just visualize it uh, right next to the data. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, so I'll just re repeat the question. So there's a question about uh, use of, of NumPy versus pandas for, uh, at least for the example we gave. So actually, I mean, you can import anything. You can import pandas as well. And actually, we have a capability where you can transform a size sheet to and from a pandas data frame. So you have that complete, and that's actually part of the API, part of the runtime is, is provides that. We didn't illustrate it here. Other questions? Yes. So the question is, do we have uh, abilities to read in existing uh, Excel spreadsheets and interpret formulas? Um, you know, we, we take advantage of like the uh, pandas capability, certainly to read in data. We haven't done anything with interpreting the formulas yet, but that's an interesting thought in terms of, uh, you know, being able to adapt someone from one environment to another. I, I think the challenge is that, um, you know, Excel uses uh, cell formulas and we're doing columns. And so there's a, you know, a bit more of a challenge there. You know, the data is easy, but I'm not, you know, the formulas are potentially more of a challenge. Other questions? Yes. Okay, so what are the deployment options? This allows me to fill in a gap that I left here. I didn't tell you anything about the underlying technologies. So this is a, a web-based system. It uses the Django and then Python in the background, and the front end is a browser. Um, and we use, you know, various JavaScript packages. So um, one, um, one very likely uh, one is Jupyter. Uh, and that's, I, I would say, the, the main one that we're considering. There are some other projects that are sort of nibbling in various ways at the spreadsheet area. But we're looking, actually, to some degree, what we're looking for is there a reason why we shouldn't just do Jupyter. So other questions? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have your hand? Okay. Uh, other? Okay. Okay, so um, 
Okay, so well, two questions. The first one is uh, how do we handle standard, standard output? Right now it's suppressed, I and mean, we don't have a good example of that. It's really, it ha if you want to see something, it has to be part of the spreadsheet environment. And so, I mean, that's a good question about, you know, how you adapt that if someone just had a script where they were doing, you know, standard up, and that's a good question about how to deal with that use case. Um, and um, the second one is in terms of, you know, outputting complex data structures. I mean, typically, the, the def it, everything gets interpreted as a NumPy array, but the NumPy array, uh, the underlying element can be an object. So you could have a NumPy array that is an array of lists or array of something else. And it just comes out, and you, then you'll see actually a list in the cell. Okay, other questions? Yes. Okay, so what is our, what, what is success with those two billion users? Um, that's an excellent question. I would say that, you know, and this is, uh, we haven't formulated this, but I would say in, in my, my rough statement, I would like to see any one of those users that could, you know, do their calculation and visualization in Excel, they could do it just as easily in, um, in size sheets. And that if someone, you know, going beyond this a little bit, to someone is maybe more of a, a MATLAB console user or our console user, that, but then split between that and then let's say a, um, a, a spreadsheet for other things, that they could do everything inside of size sheets. Can I add? I oh, wanna, sure, please. I just want to add one other thing. I think this also enables people that don't have any programming experience to have a really easy entry point for their data so they can just have it in the spreadsheet and start like working with Python then. So you kind of force them to start using Python. And I think if it's very intuitive and approachable that, you know, there's no scary kind of learning curve for that. So, That's yeah. That's a good answer. Go ahead. One chance. Yeah, um, the answer is yes. Um, everything is, is um, on the back end. And so um, right now we're, we have a uh, serialization format that's a JSON format. And, and ultimately there'll be a database back end. Can I just intercede for a second and invite the second speaker to set up while you Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's move out of the way. Um, yes. Oh, pivot table. Oh, how does it handle pivot tables? Right now, we, we don't directly handle pivot tables. 